Hi everybody, Don Komarechka here for DP Review TV, and today we are going to go down the rabbit hole that is diffraction. Understanding what it is and how it affects your image quality is going to hopefully help you take better pictures. One of the best ways to look at diffraction is to understand at least partially the wave nature of light. And we can do that by comparing it to water using a ripple tank. And when a wave of water passes through an opening, uh, it behaves in a certain way, and we can call that diffraction, or the way it bends around an object. And light does the same thing when it passes through the aperture in your camera. So let's do an experiment and see what happens. So here we have a, a fairly simple experiment. Uh, ripple tank with a little um, rolling, like a rolling pin here, that I can use to make waves, straight waves, that will pass through an opening that I have placed right here. Now imagine this as being a wide aperture, it's a fairly wide opening, and if I were to send water going through that, then it's going to create a pattern. That pattern uh, shows a little bit of bending of the wave along the edges of the, um, uh, of the opening, and a lot of stuff going right through is passing straight on through, not being affected at all. But what if I were to uh, make that opening smaller? What if I were to make it much smaller? and uh, by putting an extra little block in there, and then trying that same experiment again. What we will see is that the waves will bend much more. The entire thing becomes a curve as a result, and light does the exact same thing when it passes through the opening in our camera. Well, not exactly. It's two dimensions versus three, and there's some other stuff in there too. But what, what happens here is that light is bending off course. That wave should be carrying straight on through, but now a lot of it is bending off in all different directions. So how does that relate to light? Let's take a look with a laser. So here we have a laser pointer, uh, and it is pointed at the far wall, but right in front of it, is a lens cap that has a pinhole in it. And that's important because that laser passing through that tiny, tiny opening of that pinhole and going a long distance is gonna give us a really cool idea as to what diffraction is actually doing when light passes through a small opening. I'm gonna to have to turn off the, uh, the room lights here and uh, turn on the laser and let's take a look and see what that pattern looks like. Now, it can be tricky to get things to perfectly line up, but when you do, you get to see this pattern. And you can see that the laser, well, you've got the single dot in the center, it's spread out a little bit, but you also have this pattern around it. That pattern, uh, well, the center part is called an airy disc, the pattern and airy pattern, named after the guy that came up with this, discovered it for the first time. Uh, and it shows us what light does when it passes through an opening much too small to keep things cohesive on the other end. Now, the ripple pattern is due to optical interference and such, but how does this actually translate into our photography and why diffraction is a problem in image making for critical sharpness and resolution? Well, let's do a practical test. So here we are with an actual photographic test. Now, uh, we have a Canon MPE 65 millimeter lens here and a Madagascan sunset butterfly specimen um, as a way to just gauge the, the detail that we can gather in a shot based on what we set our aperture to. So I'm going to just focus on this here. It's on an automated focusing rail here, a um, Novaflex Castel Micro. And uh, that can let me dial in the focus very, very precisely and automatically, which I use for focus stacking on a scale like this. So now that I have it in focus, I'm gonna take a photograph at f2.8, and I'm gonna take another one at f16. Now there's gonna be a big difference between the two of these in terms of diffraction. Diffraction meaning the light bending around the opening and kind of bending off course, coloring outside the lines, if you will. Uh, light that should be hitting one particular pixel will be hitting multiple pixels at the same time, uh, and that just blurs the results of everything that we're trying to capture the crisp detail of. Now, macro photography is a little bit different than other areas because there's an effective aperture to consider. Long story short, the more magnification you have, the smaller your effective aperture actually is. And uh, there is a chart in the uh, manual for this particular lens that illustrates exactly what that effective aperture is gonna be. At five to one magnification, which is what I'm at right now, at 
f16, my effective aperture is actually f96, and it can sneak up on you pretty quickly when you're doing a lot of close-up photography. Diffraction is always going to limit the resolution of your images. You might gain a slight increase in depth of field, but you're gonna compromise your critical resolution for that. It's not a compromise that I'm willing to make. Well, there it is, folks, a very simple explanation of diffraction. And yes, I know things get more complicated than this. This is just a cursory look to understand that the smaller your aperture, yes, it does give you greater depth of field, but it also compromises your image quality when you make it too small. And the higher resolution camera that you have, the smaller the pixels are on that sensor, uh, the photo sites, I should say, and the smaller they get, the more likely diffraction is going to be a problem for you. So the closer you get, the shallower that depth of field is gonna be, and just sometimes you'll have to embrace that. So there it is, diffraction in a nutshell. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to me and DP Review. Uh, you know, there's more videos like this coming out and follow me on social media, uh, you know, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter where you'll find more of these little musings and rabbit holes that I go down here on this channel and elsewhere as well. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Oh, and just one more thing. Uh, you know, the lens that I was using uh, moments ago, the Canon MPE 65 millimeter lens, that debuted in 1999. It's an oldie but a goodie, but on it, it's labeled as f2.8. And every lens is rated at their maximum aperture at infinity focus and only there. Not everybody realizes that as you get closer and closer to your subject, your effective aperture, even on a regular lens, gets smaller and smaller. The trick here is, this lens doesn't focus to infinity. It only focuses at one-to-one -one life size, and in the manual, it shows you at one-to-one, f2.8 becomes f5.6. So the numbers can be deceiving on these lenses and know that you only hit that maximum aperture that's on the barrel of the lens when you're shooting at infinity.